The Aviator Harness is creating a new mindset in harness and leash restraint systems for pet birds. The Aviator Harness will allow humans to allow birds freedom to safely exercise, fly, and explore any area without the bird escaping from the human's control. Hi. Congratulations on thinking outside of the cage. This is an instructional video that will help you understand how to properly use the aviator harness. Even if you already have experience with another style harness, I believe it will be very beneficial for you to watch the entire video. Parrots need more exercise than other pets, but they usually receive much less. Most pet birds spend the majority of their lives in a cage where they can barely extend their wings. For 20 years, I've lived with thousands of flighted parrots, and I've seen firsthand the amazing joy and confidence that they experience with every part of their being when they're able to combine life and flight. The aviator harness and leash will allow your companion the freedom to safely fly, exercise, and explore any area without escaping your control. Most of the cages and flights at Hartman Aviary have safety doors. But because these babies are raised as flighted birds and they're learning the basics on how to navigate and fly and they spend time in this outdoor nursery every day, we're not that concerned when we open the door if one were to fly out. These guys are learning how to navigate, they know how to fly, and they know the sights and sounds of where they live. Since we first made this instructional video, we have produced tens of thousands of aviator harnesses. Along the way, we have received lots of feedback and ideas that have allowed us to produce a better harness for your bird. From time to time during this program, I will be popping in to offer explanations to some of the more frequently asked questions, explain the improvements, and offer a few suggestions to make the aviator work better for you. Hi, it's time to take a look at the aviator harness. Now, I know obviously you've all opened the package already, but before we go any further, I would like for you to remove all of your pet birds from the environment where we're watching the TV and looking at the harness. Harnesses are a very new concept for our parrots and us, and it's important that we understand exactly what we're doing before we try to introduce the harness to them because we don't want to create any situations that uh, don't work out optimally for us. Some birds are very opposed to new things coming into their environment, some birds are very phobic and afraid of new things coming in the, into their environment. And there's a few birds out there that have had not so pleasant past experiences with a harness. And they're probably going to know exactly what's going on when they see the video or see what comes out of the package. So let's go ahead and get them out of the way. And then we will learn everything there is to know about the harness. And then we'll show them the ropes. Okay. Now, I know you're very anxious to see just how the harness works. So I have a friend here, my very patient stuffed animal parrot, who has agreed to demonstrate the harness for us. And what I'm going to do is very quickly put a harness on this guy, and then we'll uh, go over the particulars later. But at least you'll see exactly how it works and understand a little bit more as I explain. All we do is we take and we slide the collar over the head, pull the wing through on that side, pull the wing through on this side, and then we have one slide here that has the belt in it. All we've got to do is tighten that right up to the bird's waist and pull the excess through, and we're all done. And that is a harness installed on our pet bird. Okay, so let's go ahead and now we can open the package and, and get the other harness out here. Take a, take a look at the harness a little more carefully. What you find right off is a lot of strap material and what looks like a bungee cord. Uh, kind of confusing, you don't have a clue as to how it works. And so the first thing we need to do is orient ourselves to the harness and how the harness orients to the bird. This is very easy to do. What we want to do is sort of look for the middle of this mess of strap material and we'll find this part here that is the collar that goes around the bird. The collar has a loop in the middle and it has a Y intersection on either end of it. And then on the very end of the tongues that come out of the uh, collar, there's a loop where the, uh, the belt material slides through. So what we want to do is match up these two loops 
on the end of the tongues, and we'll pull the excess belt material out of the way, if it would cooperate. Get it right out of there. Now, if we take a look at it, we can see that one tongue, tongue on this side is obviously longer than the other side. It's about twice as long in, in this particular uh, case. Depending upon the size of the harness you have, the ratio of lengths will be different. But in this case, this longer side is the back side, and the longer side is always the back side. We'll take a look at how it fits on the bird here. If we turn it around, we can see the long tongue with the belt at the bottom. Line it up with the harness on the bird. We can see this Y intersection at the top of that tongue comes right up to the back of the bird's neck. We designed this specifically so that that intersection fits right behind the bird's neck, just like where the, the collar of your shirt would fit on you. And these straps are designed to hug the neck and come right around to the front of the bird, as opposed to sliding off of the neck and onto the, the shoulder and onto the wing where it will just you know, annoy the bird. If the strap material is hanging down on the wing, the bird's going to know it's there, he's going to be paying attention to it, and he's not going to enjoy the experience as much. Now, if we look at the front of the harness, the strap material comes down, and instead of ending up right below the chin or the neck here, uh, it goes all the way down below the crop. And we designed it this way so that the bird can eat before you put the harness on. He can also eat while he's wearing the harness. Without having to worry about the strap material pushing on the crop, and becoming uncomfortable. Uh, if we look at the tongue at the bottom of the crop, it can, extends all the way down to the belt line just like it does in the back. Now I'm going to show you something else here. I don't want you to try this at home. Uh, we have a very patient bird here and he doesn't complain much, so I'm going to take the tip of his wing and just pull it up underneath the collar there to get it out of the way so that I can show you the uh, very interesting safety feature that we've designed into the belt of the bird. And we have a situation where the belt of the bird becomes the leash and the point where the slide is on the belt is the contact point of the leash to the bird. Once you start to put the harness on your bird, you're going to notice that the belt orientation pictured on the box is different than the harness that you actually have. Now what we found over time is three different things that have made us uh, change the orientation so that the belt actually extends out of the slide towards the center of the bird. The first thing is that with this orientation it keeps the slide from twisting back and actually poking the bird in the side. Second is that most owners hold the bird on their left hand and put the wrist strap on their right. If the bird were to suddenly fly off, this facilitates the rotation of the belt to work better so that the bird is able to reorient its point of attachment to the owner and limit the uh, impact when he gets to the end. The third reason is that we found that most people that do fly their birds regularly on an extended leash tend to fly them in a clockwise manner. This also puts the rotating side of the belt towards the owner and makes it much easier for the bird to fly. The, uh, the belt is designed so that it will move around the bird. And the, the reason this is important is that if the bird is on the ground walking around and you've got the leash up here, the leash is out of the way. You can slide it to the back of the bird. If the bird is up above you, if you're flying the bird, the bird is on a perch or on your shoulder, you can have the leash hang down in front of you, now, or in front of the bird. Now, the most important safety feature of the harness is, is that since this point of attachment will orient around the bird, to the owner, if the bird were to fly to the end of the leash, either as a normally flighted parrot or unexpectedly when it would get scared, the, uh, if the leash was attached to the front of the bird and the bird got to the end, the bird would be flipped around and disoriented and not be able to comfortably land. But since this leash will pull around as the belt moves around the bird, as the bird gets to the end, the leash reorients between the bird and the owner and the bird gets to the end the shock cord slowly absorbs the impact and the bird can easily settle right to the ground. So very important that this operates properly around your bird. Now let's put him aside and we'll go back to our, uh, there you go, thank you. We'll go back to our collar that we can hold in our hand here, our harness. Now if we take a look at the slide, the slide is the only piece of metal on the harness. We can reduce it down to this one point where we uh, adjust the strap material so that it fits tight to the bird. Fewer places for the bird to pay attention to, uh, fewer metal pieces for the bird to break. 
We just have one, uh, makes it a very safe situation for the bird. You'll notice that the belt slide pictured on the package and the belt slides used in the harnesses on the video are a shiny steel material. Now, we found a way to powder coat the same high quality steel black, same way that the bird cages are powder coated. This provides us with a harness that has a dark colored slide and is much less attractive to your bird to play with while he's wearing the harness. Now we need to practice working the strap material through this slide because our fingers are kind of big, slide's kind of small, and we don't want to annoy the bird when we're trying to put the harness on the bird because if we're fumbling with the belt material on the slide, we're knocking him sideways, he doesn't know what's going on, he's getting agitated, and pretty soon he's going to give up and you'll be right behind him. So practice with this quite a bit before you try to put it onto the bird. Now, once we come off of the bird past the slide, we go out to the end of the extra strap material, and we'll find that we're connected to a shock cord. And this is a 100% shock cord. And the reason we have this on here is to absorb impact when the bird gets to the end, when it is flying, or if it is scared and flies. For the birds that get afraid and fly off, uh, they will very easily gently land. For the birds that are flying on purpose with this, they can fly out to the end and without being jerked when they get to the end, they have time to slowly reorient themselves and fly around. And what you'll find is this actually a, a, a caveat to the, the design of the harness. We found out that it's very easy to teach your bird to fly to you on command because as he gets out to the end, he's still flying and he's hanging and he's still moving a little bit and he'll slowly start to pull around and come right back to you. And if you give him a command, as he's coming back, he'll see you and land right on your arm. And you can very quickly teach them to fly to you on command. Let's go on out to the end of the leash, and we find we have a loop on the end. This loop is not a handle. It is a wrist strap. This is very important to remember. The wrist strap goes over your wrist, always. Whenever you're outside with the bird, whenever you're in a situation where you do not want to lose control of the bird, you have this on your wrist. For those of you that expect that you're always going to be paying attention and you will just hold it in your hand, I can guarantee you that eventually you're going to have the up, up, and away experience that you really do want to avoid. You'll notice that there is no longer any distractive stitching on the harness. In an effort to produce a more comfortable and less distractive harness for your pet to wear, I've developed an ultrasonic welding process to replace the old style stitching. Basically what we do is we place our strap material into these specially designed jigs and when this horn comes down it penetrates the middle of the material and vibrates at a rate of about 20,000 cycles per second. The high vibration creates friction which actually welds the material together. The end result is a strongly bound strap material with no distractive stitching for your bird to play with. Now that we know how the harness works, let's go see how to put it to work. What we're going to do is go into the nursery and see how to mentally and physically introduce the harness to young birds, which, by the way, is the same way we introduce it to old birds. It's just that it's easier with young birds because uh, young babies and young birds, adolescents, are always looking for something to get into. So introducing them to the harness is, in a lot of cases, fascinating to them. Uh, Adults are often fixed in the behaviors and are resistant to change and will take a little bit longer. But the process is exactly the same. You just have to proceed a little bit slower with adults that are not ready for new experiences. And we will show you how to do that so that you can make it a, uh, an easy experience for your older birds. Well, let's go take a look in the nursery and we'll see how to put the harness to work. Oh, yes, I got it. For a number of reasons, more than we could possibly cover in this video, we need to be very cautious when introducing a harness to adult and baby parrots. Now, baby parrots, you would think you can come right up to and put the harness on without any problem. The problem is that babies will allow you to do things to them that may, they may not really like, but because you're the parent and they're subordinate to you, they allow you to do it for several times before they decide, you know, this just isn't quite right and then it will be too late, you'll have made the mistake, and you will have to start all over and spend a lot of time and energy to reintroduce the harness to the bird in a positive manner. 
Now, there's two things that we need to be concerned with when we're introducing the harness of the birds. There's a physical and a mental component. The physical component is that we are doing things to the bird when we're actually putting the harness on that we don't normally do as a normal behavior and playing and uh, handling the birds. There are behaviors that are very similar to what we do, but things like sliding your hands over the head of the bird, we oftentimes hold the bird and cuddle the bird's head, but we don't slide our hands over past the face, past the eyes, where the eyes have to close, and then down around the neck. We also, when we're holding the wing up, we might be scratching under the wing, but we're not holding the wing up while we're doing something else. We're holding the wing up while we're rubbing under the wing. And when we're putting the harness on, we're holding the wing up and doing something that the bird is totally disassociated with. He doesn't understand what's going on. He's not being petted under the wing. He's just got his wing up in the air. The third thing that we need to be concerned physically is that the bird is being pushed off balance a lot of times when we're trying to work the buckle on the bird. So the bird's standing there, you've got the wing up, you think this is things that you normally do, and you're slowly pushing the bird over, and he's just not sure quite what's going on. So baby birds allow you to do, to do this for several times, and then eventually they say, I don't understand, I don't want to do this. So it's important to take the time to work with those behaviors. I'll look at them a little bit here on a real bird, and you will learn to teach the bird to accept these behaviors. You know, harnesses are not for all birds. Birds that are not well educated and not well behaved are not ready for a harness. You've got a lot of work ahead of you before you can put a harness on a bird that you can't handle. Do not try to take a, a bird that doesn't want you to handle them and touch them at all and put a harness on it because you will ruin any possibility of in the future getting a harness on that bird. You're taking a step backwards if you're trying to put a bird, harness on a bird that is not ready for it. So, now as far as the uh, mental situation, the birds don't know what a harness is, they've never had a harness on, and they don't have a clue as to what you're talking about. In some cases, older birds don't even like new things coming into their environment. So we need to mentally prepare the bird for something new coming into the environment and something that's going to be put onto them. Uh, the way you should think of it is as a toy. Think of the new harness as a toy. You know your bird. If you've got a bird that is phobic, that is not interested in new items coming into its life, you may have to take this harness and put it on a table that's on the other side of the room and leave it there for an hour, a day, a week, months sometimes. Slowly move it closer to the bird. Now here in the aviary, we have harnesses and harness material. And you can see over here we've got one we actually take toys and hang them up with a harness strap. Now we have a situation in the nursery where we're trying to introduce the birds to the harness from the start. These birds in our aviary, in our nursery, already know what the strap material is. When it gets around their necks, over their backs, uh, or when they're presented with it at all, they are not concerned. They're, they already understand what it is. Birds that have never seen this material before may be a little bit afraid of it. So, Take the harness. You can lay the harness on top of the cage where the bird will eventually have to walk over it. Uh, leave it by itself unassociated with you. If you are the one taking the harness and approaching the bird, it's quite different than if the harness is just laying on top of the cage and the bird finds it itself. In fact, I think these guys are going to find it right now because they're babies, they're very curious and they have lots of toys and they're used to lots of different new things coming into their environment. So they own anything that comes into the room and they own this harness now apparently. Let go, let me have it, let me have it. Okay, so you got the idea. Now, for birds that are a little bit phobic and you need to take your time, you can also wear the harness. It's part of me. It's not something that's coming at them. Put it around your neck, walk up to the bird, handle the bird, and it's just like wearing a piece of clothing. Take the harness, you can drape it over the bird's back, and just pull it over while you're petting the bird, not trying to put it on. Take your time. Step. Good girl. What are you looking at? Okay, it's time to take a look at the physical conditioning that's necessary for even the best aviator. Uh, 
This is Crayola, uh, and I brought Crayola into this room because it's a little too noisy in the nursery uh, and there's too much activity going on. Sure, her gang in there would be uh, helping to participate. And uh, we need her uh, undivided attention, which she apparently isn't going to give us now. Uh, but uh, keep an eye on what I do to her to condition her as we go along. Step. Uh, no, good girl, good girl. Okay. Now, Crayola is a six-month-old scarlet macaw. She's a Cyanoptera subspecies, and she's in our future breeder program. She was raised by her parents. She has excellent domestic genetics, so we want to keep back this bloodline, and so it can be represented in our flock later on. We have her grandparents and her parents, and her and a brother, and we'll uh, be able to breed them in another five or ten years. So in the meantime, we want her to grow up being a bird. Good girl. Yes, that's a good girl. So aside from the hand feeding that was done with her and some movement from cage to cage and indoor and outdoor, from the indoor nursery to the outdoor nursery, uh, Crayola has not been handled very much by humans, probably in a, a maximum of 10 hours in the last six months. Uh, she's very stable, and the reason that she's so uh, stable is that She's been raised around other birds. She's had adult role models, which were tame, and she's uh, had a lot of activity in her life, a lot of life experience. So what I'm doing now is I'm holding up the wings, and she's doing very good. She's allowing me to do this. This is one of the three behaviors we need to work on because most of the time when you're working with a bird, playing with them, you're rubbing them under the wing when you've got the wing up, and they are occupied with you touching them, they don't realize that the wing is up. When you're holding the wing up totally disassociated with anything that you're doing, what are you watching there? I think she's, uh, she has never been in the room before, so she's right now looking around the room, which is probably why she's behaving so well. Uh, but if you're petting the bird like this, the bird's concentrating on the petting and not on the fact that you've got the wing up in the air. But when you just hold the wing up, it's an unnatural behavior for the bird, and they notice that their wing is up and they try to put it down. Can I put this one up now? Okay, so in general, what you want to do is push the bird to the limit of where she will allow you to hold the wing up, and then count to three. And as soon as you get to three, then you let her put the wing down. She wins, and you've established a little bit of discipline in her that you're the boss. The second behavior we want to look at is covering the eyes. When you pet a bird, a lot of times you're, you're petting the face and you're rubbing the, the uh, feathers on the head, but you're not making the bird close their eye. You're doing very good. When you're going to put the collar of the harness over the bird, you're going to be putting it around the face of the bird and dragging it down. That's okay, good girl, over the eyes, and the eyes are going to have to close very strange sensation for the bird. So a uh, big mistake a lot of people make is taking the harness, sticking it over the head, scraping along the eyes. The bird doesn't know it needs to close the eyes. It's very uncomfortable and the bird tries to eliminate that behavior. So she's doing very good there. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do it without much petting here. I'm going to... Good girl. See how much she'll tolerate it. Very good. Now, the third behavior we want to work on is pushing the bird off balance because a lot of times when you're putting the harness on, you're not very coordinated. And good, good girl, good girl. Now, she doesn't like that. She's wondering what's going on. I'm going to go one, two, three, done. Now, when you count to three, the bird realizes after a while that, okay, this is something I don't want to do, but after three, I'm going to get a chance to stop. So let's go ahead and push her the other direction. Can I push her this way? Good girl. Good girl. One, two, three. Good girl. All right, that's enough for the first lesson. I'm going to go ahead and put Crayola back. We'll get her out in another hour and try a little bit more. All right, we're back. Step. Good girl. Okay. Now, if your bird is not as handleable as Crayola here, you're going to need to work with that before you try to put the harness on. You want to work with a bird that's conditioned to allow you to condition them. If they're not well behaved to begin with, if they haven't been uh, shown discipline from the start, if they're not potty trained, if they're not uh, coming to you uh, when you call them, if they're not uh, 
stepping on command and staying on your hand when you want them to, then you're going to need to be working with that along with these behaviors so that once you do get the harness on, then the bird is, you know, well behaved anyways. So, let me uh, work on your head. Okay, we just keep trying these behaviors over and over again every hour. Try them for just a few minutes, not very long. We don't want to push her past her attention span. Okay. Now in the future, hopefully all of the birds will be exposed to these behaviors when they're about five weeks old, which is the stage of development in the brain where the parents would be starting to push them uh. to be disciplined a little bit. One, two, three. Uh. Good girl. Let's try the other wing. Let's try it. I'm going to hold it way out here. One, two, three. Good girl. She's already starting to get the idea that after I count, she's going to be able to stop whatever I'm doing to her. I'm going to push her up balance. Now, if you're doing this from the start when she's five weeks old, uh, or if the breeder is doing it when they're in the nursery, when you get the bird as a baby or even as an adult, a well-behaved bird, you can work on these behaviors while you're doing normal behaviors like watching TV or just playing with the bird. Good girl, she's doing very well. Uh, push her this uh, way. Uh, yes. Now even though she's doing very well, we want to, no, stay where you're at. We want to keep up with these behaviors because we want to make sure that when we're doing something as strange as putting a harness around her neck and body that she will uh, accept the behaviors and she'll allow us to continue with it. Good girl. Okay. That's enough for this time. Yep. Good girl. Step. No step. Good girl. Now, I've only been showing you every other session here, so this is about her fifth session that she's been in here. So she's not as progressing as well as she's showing on camera. I'm showing you the better ones. But uh, let's go over the eye again here now. And you remember that you're doing this for life. You're not doing it to get a harness on. You're getting, doing it to get a harness on every day for the rest of her life. So think about it long term. Think about how much you need to invest to make sure that you are going, no, it's one, two, three. Good girl, good girl, that's a good bird. So you're investing some time here for the rest of her life, not just for a few days. So if you have a bird that's not well trained, plan on spending a couple days, a couple weeks, a couple months, whatever. One, two, three. Now wait until she started to jerk away. Now there's also a situation where I'm talking, she probably thinks that I'm kind of relating to her, so she's not as... Uh, concerned about the discipline that I'm giving her the, the exercises. So I'm going to stop talking for a second. One, two, three. Okay, good girl, good girl. When you stop talking, they lose their attention and uh, they'll start responding to what you're doing to them. Okay, it's time to start working with the harness. Now she's been exposed to the harness in the nursery. Nobody has ever tried to put a harness on this bird. Uh, nobody's ever approached her with a harness this close, but she has had the strap material hanging in her cage, holding toys and hanging as ropes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the harness in my hand the same way I would be if I was putting it over her head so that when I come up and cut her with it, she's not concerned about it. Yes, and this is the way we would approach her to slide it over her head. Yes, that's a good girl. Good girl. Yes. I'm going to drape it around her body. Can I do this to you? Can I do this? Huh? What is that? No. No. We don't want her to play with it. We don't want her to chew on it. Uh, birds, once they have the harness on, because of the natural preening behavior, they'll start playing with the harness because it's not allowing the feathers to hang in the right place. They're trying to straighten their feathers, and the harness is in the way. We want to train her not to bother with that. Uh, part of that training is involved in as soon as you get the harness on, you take the bird out, do something fun and exciting so the bird can't take the time to concentrate on the training. Okay, very good. Let's put your wings up one more time. Let's do both of them at the same time this time. We're going to stretch them out a little bit. Because, no. One, two, three. Good girl. So you saw as soon as I said no, 
because she knows what no is now. She's going it very quickly. Uh, she also knows what the one, two, three is. So as soon as I started one, she waited, right? Let's do it again. Let's show them. Now I'm going to stretch them out to the limit. One, two, three. Good girl. And she just stands around and waits for three. Yes, that's a good girl. Okay, let's go back. Next time we're going to try putting the harness on. Good girl. Stop. Good girl. Right, it's time to start the behavior using the harness. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the harness, make sure it's all straight. We're going to put our hand through where her head would go through. So just like this. And the inside of the harness is on the outside of my hand. I'm turn around. Step. Good girl. Step. Very good. Now when I go up to her head to pet her and to go over her head, I've got the harness on my hand. I've got her eyes closed because my fingers are over them. And I've got the harness on before she even knows it. Huh? You don't even know you're wearing that harness, do you? We have a situation with the collar where we find it's easier to put it on and off of large birds than it is on the small birds. The reason is that the actual sizing of the harness is determined by a point from the center of the chest or basically the belly button of the bird to the middle of the back of the bird. On the smaller harnesses, a significant portion of the harness is taken up with the back belt loop and the front belt loop, which leaves less material to go between the front and the back of the bird, making the maximum size of the collar less in proportion to the size of the bird. Now with the larger birds it's fairly easy to get the harness or collar over the, the head of the bird. With the smaller birds you're going to have to practice more times before you actually put the collar completely on the bird. Get the bird used to the harness going on and off maybe just over the beak and then slowly down over the eyes until you're comfortable getting the harness on and off. What we find is some of the owners get the harness on the bird, they take the bird outside, the bird's wearing the harness for quite a while, and then when the bird is ready to have the harness off, he's agitated a little bit because you're taking so much time, and he doesn't want to wait for you to get the, the collar off of his head. So practice that more on the small birds before you actually put the harness on. Now we also have an issue with the crested cockatoos. Crested cockatoos, sometimes they have crests that are four, five, six inches long, what we need to do with those is make sure that before you take the harness off of the bird, you raise the collar all the way up below the lower mandible. That way you can slowly lift the back of the collar up. As soon as the feathers get to a vertical position, you can pull the collar underneath the lower mandible and pull it straight up. Hopefully he won't fall off of the table. Okay, now I'm going to pull all of the extra strap material over to this side. And I'm going to, while I'm keeping her attention, she's not even going to know that I just pull up her wing and have the harness underneath. Right. Yes, you're a very good girl. Now let's pull the strap material to the other side while I'm sort of petting her. A lot of times I'll reach up and grab the strap material. It's a natural behavior. It's something right in front of them, almost like a toy or your hand where you would be putting your hand out for them to grab it. So they're just doing something that's totally natural to them. Now that I've got all of the strap material pulled over to this side, I just push it back around the wing, pull the wing through. Oh boy, good girl. That's a very good girl. Now we want to buckle the slide. Yes, where is it here? Pull it back over to this side. Now, should leave a loop in the slide so it's easy to grab a hold of. Because the first few times you do this, the bird is not going to cooperate usually. And you're going to need a be able to quickly grab this. Now you've practiced this a lot, so yes, good girl. Good girl. So you're very quick at it. I'm going to go ahead and pull it through. Oh, yes. Okay, now I want to make sure there's enough room to just barely get a finger or a thumb through on the, a bird this size. I'm going to pull the extra out. Oh, you like me. You're just a, I'm worried you're not with all your buddies, huh? Yes. That's probably part of the reason she's behaving so well is that she doesn't have her, her buddies in there and she's lonely. So, okay, now we have the harness on, stuck, and we see, well, this is a little loose, so we're going to have to tighten that up. Let's tighten it up. Yes, good girl. 
Good girl. Sometimes you're going to think you got it the right tightness and it's not. So we got just one finger's worth there now. Step. Taking a lot of time adjusting the belt when you're putting the harness on can be very aggravating to your bird. So once you've tightened it a few times and are comfortable with the fit, you can take a magic marker of a contrasting color and just make a line right down the center of the belt in the middle of the slide and that way it'll take the guesswork out of tightening the belt in the future. Now if it's on properly, you should be able to grab the leash just outside of the belt and as the bird were to move down, if you were outside with the bird, the, the harness would, or the leash would come up top. If the bird goes above you, the buckle comes down. Good girl. Step. Step. Okay, again, slides up, slides down, slides up, slides down. Step. Now, we're not going to do anything exciting with her. She's starting to get impatient, so we're going to go ahead and take the harness off. Right. The best time to work with a bird is in the middle of the afternoon. Assuming you feed in the morning, you feed at night. In the morning, right after they wake up, not a good time. They're rambunctious, just like a little kid. They're going to have a short attention span. They eat, and then as soon as they're done being rambunctious, they're going to want to take a nap. Again, not a good time. Okay, now we've undone the slide. Let's pull all the material over to one side and tuck that wing through there. Oh, yes, good girl. Good girl. Now we can pull it all back over to this side. No. Good girl. And we can push the other wing back now. It's the middle of the afternoon. The bird is not really hungry. And uh, they're not really tired from eating. They're not really anxious from waking up. So that's the point in time where you're going to get the best and longest attention span. Now to get the collar off, we pull it up underneath the chin. And then we just sort of tip it over the top of the head here. Just like that. Good girl. Now with a cockatoo, it's going to be a little more, more difficult. Depending upon which cockatoo you have with the long crest, you might have to come up underneath. And then over the top, put it higher up on the lower level. That's a good girl. Okay. Step. Very good. Now we're going to... We're going to take off and come back. We'll do one more session, quickly putting the harness on and see how she does if I just walk in to put the harness on. Good girl. Okay, this is our last session. Let's make it good. Now, we've done this probably a dozen times altogether. Only once did I put the harness on. But here's the harness here. Coming in, picking it up. Make sure it's all straight. Come up to her head. Just slide it right over her eyes. I didn't use my hands that time. She's doing very well. I'm going to come over here and I'm talking to her. I'm going to pull her wing through. I'm knocking her off balance at the same time, but she's used to that. Pull the belt material all over to this side. Pull the wing through. Oh, hey, hey, hey. It's okay. It's okay. You didn't like that, huh? Did I do something wrong? Okay. We'll tighten this up quickly. Yes, yeah, stay right there. Okay, I gotta tighten the correct amount this time. Pull the extra material out. Step, and she's ready to go. And we test to make sure that it's the right tightness around the waist. Just like that. Oh, are you getting impatient? Step. Okay, and then before we go somewhere, put this on your wrist, not in your hand. And we're ready to go have a good time. Now it's time to see some parrots and harnesses in action. We're going to go and take a look at some clips of owners with their parrots. And while we're seeing the birds flying and the owners putting the harnesses on, taking them off, and introducing the harnesses to them, I will give you some tips that will help you and ensure that your bird will learn to love the aviator harness for life and that he understands how to deal with the freedom that he will enjoy when he's wearing the aviator harness. When first introducing the harness, consistency is very important. Let your birds see it multiple times every day. Get them used to touching and being touched by the harness. Let them explore it with their mouth, but you want to stop short of letting them chew on it like they would a toy. We don't want to encourage 
them to chew on it once they're wearing it. Now again, this is exactly the same strategy we use for adult birds, it just takes a little longer. Take a look at the huge crop on that green wing in the back. You can see that these guys have just been fed and are probably more interested in a nap right now. If these were older birds in training, it would be a poor time to be working with them. Although just about any time is a good time for a bird that's already trained to wear a harness. Now once the harness is on, do something special with the bird that will keep him from being aware that he's wearing the harness. This guy is a young bird and he's still a little leery of new experiences. Just like a child, he will be more interested in staying close to mom or dad while he cautiously explores his environment at this stage. In a week or two, he will start to become much more adventurous and you want to make sure that you encourage the adventure to create as many life experiences as possible at that stage in life. You always want to try to keep the training session short, plan to stop before they've reached the limit of their attention span. The aviator harness is escape proof when used properly. By properly we mean while well, you're being attentive to the bird wearing the harness. Now at first this is a new thing for the bird. He's going to be looking it over. He's going to be paying attention to it. After a while, he'll wear it and not even know that he's wearing it. But you always need to be vigilant. This is not a product that's meant to tether the bird somewhere while you go somewhere else. You were always there with the bird. Now we all know that many birds can get out of the best designed steel cages given enough time, and the same thing's true with the harness. Uh, if you train the bird properly, eventually he will wear it and not even know that he's wearing it. We have uh, questions quite often about the shock cord and how strong it is. Now, on each harness, it's placed the appropriate distance away from the harness on the belt so that the bird actually has to pick up the belt and pull the belt to him to get access to where the shock cord hooks on. Now, we have a metal clamp that holds the shock cord. The clamp has two sides with prongs in it that hold the shock cord in place. We do have a few of the larger birds that try to work on taking the clamp apart. And uh, even if they do open up one side, it's still held on the other side, giving the owner plenty of time to notice what the bird is doing and to stop the behavior. The shock cord is a very high quality material. It has multiple rubber bands in it, depending upon the size of harness, up to 10 rubber bands. And it has a high quality nylon woven material on the outside, which is very difficult to chew through. Now, even if your bird does start to chew on it, he's only going to get part way through, and if he destroys a few rubber bands, it's still plenty strong, even if half of it's broken through, for, so that your bird is not going to get loose. If you do have an issue with the clamp or the shock cord, let us know, and we will replace it for free. This is not a good approach. Either this bird does not know what a harness is all about, he's just not interested right now, or the handler does not know how to approach the bird. Take the time to condition the bird and yourself and avoid a game of dodge em. This is Chloe and Lucky, a seven-year-old umbrella that Chloe just met. Some birds are lucky, like Lucky, to be so well-educated that they are able to get lots of attention from many people. And so much attention that there's used to be handled in so many different ways that just about anybody can do just about anything to them. Lucky boy. Lucky thinks he's being petted and pampered by somebody when actually the harness is being put on. He doesn't even know what's going on. Doing, Lucky? Chloe's talking to him, giving him <laughs> attention, and uh, with her touching him, he probably just feels like he's being petted. Talking to the bird is very important to keep him yeah, distracted okay. from oh, the harness yeah. installation. And as soon as the harness is on, give him something else to think about. Now, coming up is a great shot of the elastic leash in action. See how this green wing can keep flying even as he reaches the end of the leash. As the elastic leash stretches, he's slowed down but still has enough control to land safely. Let's take a look at it again it's a little slower. You can even see how the leash has moved from the chest to the side of the bird, allowing the bird to continue flying while just being slightly pulled to the right instead of being flipped around. This is Mahia. Mahia has lots of harness experience. She flies almost every day. 
and she is so totally content that she even knows how to squat down a little bit to keep her balance while Kristen puts the harness on. Yes, it isn't on just right. She needs to rearrange it a little bit. Jim and Sharon Stewart have two macaws. Jim has been flying his birds for a couple of years, and while developing his skills, has been instrumental in the design of the aviator harness. One of the first things you want to teach your bird is to fly to you on command. This works well when you first take him outside, since the situation is new and strange. With a little encouragement, he will fly to you for security. Most parrot flyers use the retractable leashes to extend the flying range. They're available up to about 26 feet long. A length of leash can be let out as needed and quickly retracted to keep the slack out of the line. Good bird! That's a good bird. Soon the aviator flight line will be available and that will greatly increase the freedom a bird can experience. There are several ways to teach a bird to fly in a circle. One of the basics is to walk the bird around the perimeter of the area where he will be flying. Visual cues can be added to help the bird learn faster. You can mow a circle in the perimeter of the flying area. You want to make sure that you mow the grass short because new flyers have a hard time landing in grass and the shorter the grass is, the more comfortable the landing and takeoff will be. We've also had good success with creating a track of yellow caution tape around the perimeter of the flight area. Now, once you have your flight area established, you can start by walking around the circle a few times, gradually go faster, and eventually with your bird raised on your hand, he will start flapping his wings, and after a while, you can just start letting him go. Now, flying from person to person or perch to person is easy to train a bird to do. What you do is start by passing the bird from yourself to a friend without the bird having to fly and slowly move further and further away, encouraging the bird to fly back and forth. It's important to develop these good flying skills early because a bird that accidentally escapes will need them to fly down out of a tree. Most escaped birds are found fairly quickly, but because the bird is unable to simply jump up and let go of a moving branch, they stay high in the tree for many hours until they get desperate enough to take the risk and jump off, usually not until the next morning. And you'll notice some positive personality changes with the bird once you get them out and start flying. They'll become a lot more gregarious. They're very confident. And uh, this blue and gold will even fly to me. He doesn't really know me. I don't know that he's ever flown to me before, but he will fly to me. And I can cuddle him and then send him off to his owner. Now, if the bird were being conditioned to fly to me and I gave him the command and he did not fly to me, it's up to the owner to give the bird the command and tell them that it's okay to do so. There's a slight problem you have when you develop the outgoing personality of a bird. He's often to, found to be curious and will fly to people he doesn't know just because he's interested in them. He doesn't know that all these people are possibly afraid of him or you know just aren't expecting him to, to fly to them. In the background here, you can see a black-headed Kaik helicopter. This uh, little guy has had his wings clipped, but he's in training. They put a harness on him when they take him outside because he can get airborne a little bit. But they're doing a lot of harness training with him now, even though he cannot fly well because they want to develop the uh, muscles and the bird, the coordination, and give him the life experience that gets him used to being outside and around trees and grass and lots of people. A little jealousy going on there. It's a little more difficult to get two birds to fly at the same time, but with a little practice and encouragement, you can get them to do just about anything. Mahi has lots of flight experience. Mahi gets out every day. Mahi even gets to go to restaurants for lunch. There's a lot of restaurants that will allow you to take birds into, uh, usually in off times when there's nobody else in the restaurant, a little before or after lunch. 
So Mahi has great social skills, and because she's well-trained, she gets to do a lot more exciting things than the average pet bird does. Now, no bird should ever be left unattended while wearing a harness. While the aviator harness is safe and escape-proof, when used properly, it can be dangerous if used improperly. Pet tethered to a tree unattended can be caught or tangled and given enough time can possibly even chew through a leash and take an unexpected solo flight. Now this girl is worn out. She's had her flight experience for the day and is ready for a nap. Early on in the training, it's important to remove the harness as soon as it's no longer needed. Many birds quickly learn to freely accept the harness and once accepted, it can be left on for an extended period of time. Now that you've finished viewing the video and understand how to approach your bird with the harness and what to expect, it's time to get to work. Good luck.